Okay, welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, so um, the the title of the talk uh, is Citizens Climate Lobby, How Are We Doing? I stole that from Paul, I think. And uh, I'm in, in physics at Sam Houston State University. And uh, I've been a Citizens Climate Lobby volunteer for, we think about eight years. And uh, there's no physics in this talk. So let's go on here. So here's an outline. So um, kind of uh, that if you if you miss everything in the talk, if you if you just get these three uh, website addresses, this is kind of where everything is. First of all, it's uh, the Citizens uh, Climate Lobby uh, website that's over there, citizensclimatelobby.org. And then, then I'm going to give some motivations for these new directions, and that's by using this Inroads uh, Climate Simulator. That's another website that anyone can use. And then I'll give a brief description of a carbon fiend dividend, review that, then talk a little bit about healthy forests, uh, building electrification, permitting reform, that's been in the news a lot. And then finally, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna show you how you can save some money through the Inflation Reduction Act. There's a savings calculator that's really good. It's it's again at this uh, 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 website. So let's go on. And uh, just as a general reference, um, I would recommend the book of uh, Bill Gates, you might know who that is. Uh, founder of Microsoft, how to how to avoid a climate disaster. I think it's really good. Another reference that I think is really good is uh, it's about a page. It's in Scientific American, February twenty second, two thousand twenty two, and it's uh, by uh, no no Na Naomi Oresk Oreskes. She's a professor of history of science at Harvard. Pretty good article. Okay, let's see. How do I? How do, oh. So so uh let's uh let's uh uh go on here. So what's the citizens climate lobby? Well, it's a nonpartisan uh lobbying and education organization. Uh and uh basically the purpose is to alleviate climate change. And it was founded in 2007 by uh, Marshall Sanders. And uh, here, there's a little question for you. Don't answer now. Uh, we'll give you the answer at the end. Uh, the founder, Marshall Sanders, made his money from, uh, was it, he's actually from Texas, uh, Lone Star Beer, Ding Dong Cupcakes, Big Red Cola, Slim Jim Meat Snacks, or Funyuns Onion Chips. So, so think about that, and we'll tell you at the end. Anyway, he he was convinced what that really the thing to do was to put a price on carbon. So the idea was to put a price on carbon, collect it at the wellhead. Well, 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 you know, if you don't know what that means, I have a little video later on and we'll talk about that. And then distribute all the collected fees on a per family basis. So what that means is it's revenue neutral. So you collect money, but then you're giving it all back. It's not going to anything else. So let's go on. Oh, oh my God. I just, I just told a lie. Does anyone know who that is? Well, it's Alfred Noble. And I, 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 I maybe this is the wrong, oh, no, no. I said there wasn't going to be any physics, but here's some physics. So it turns out that that the Nobel Prize in Physics 2021 is very interesting. Uh, oops. It's, uh, well, who won the prize and why? I don't know if anyone knows. It, anyway, the citation read that it was uh, for groundbreaking contributions to our understanding of complex physical systems. And, and there's actually three three people. Nobel Prize at most can be three people. And, and one is... Uh, uh, this fellow Parisi, something called spin glasses. And 
And actually, this is pretty close to, you know, my physics expertise, but it's completely irrelevant to this talk. Uh, but the, the people who are relevant are this guy, Wanabe. And maybe you've seen in some of these climate talks, people talk about simulations. And he was really the pioneer of simulations of the Earth's climate. And then perhaps you've heard about attribution. You know, they say a certain weather event was certain amount is, you know, chance or just normal weather, a certain amount is is human induced. And, and he he came up with techniques to uh, to tell the noise from the patterns of human induced warming. So anyway, I, I think that just indicates that the physics community takes this pretty seriously, climate change and the science that goes into it. Let's see how this goes. Okay, now what does CC, CCL do? Well, one thing is education. And uh, here we are at the Grogan's Mill Farmer's Market. And you notice, uh, I don't know if any of these people are here tonight. That's uh, that's Larry. I think Larry Kramer's here. He's over there on the right. And uh, Hans, Hans von Brocken is in the middle. And uh, uh, Charlie Lindahl is uh, over there on the left. And here we are sitting in the Grogan's, or they are sitting, sitting in the Grogan's Mill uh, farmer's market talking to people. And uh, let's go on. Let's see how this goes. Oh, and also we meet with the congressional offices and you see if you can look at this slide, uh, kind of, uh, you may, maybe you, it's a little small, but this is at, this is in Washington at Dan Crenshaw's office. And uh, that guy on the right is a congressional aide. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember his name. He's, he actually took another job. He's working for a senator now. But the the people on the left, one is uh, uh, Roger and Bill Bray. And they're at uh, Representative Crenshaw's office. That's Texas O2. And at least now in the woodlands, ha about half the woodlands is we're in Texas O2. We're not in Texas O8 anymore. So anyway, uh, here's a, here's a, a little... Uh, cartoon, who are we? Well, there are 538 local chapters in the US, Canada, overseas, about 200,000 members, about 800 in the Woodlands. That's not necessarily active, but book members. And here, here's, here's, here's a little cartoon. You have these people, climate change is real, the risk is real, government should take action. And then this other guy is saying liberal tree huggers, but then the other person is saying those are Exxon executives. And there's some truth to that because in the previous slide, uh, Roger and Bill, they actually are retired Exxon employees. I don't know, I don't know who, who Roger is and who Bill is in that cartoon. Uh, and then some of our other members, uh, Larry Kramer was, is uh, Baker Hughes, retired Baker Hughes. And uh, Hans is, uh, uh, he's retired Exxon Mobil and, Charlie is uh, he he works for Texas A and M. He's an IT guy, so he's a little anomalous, maybe. Anyway, let's go on. Okay, so what's new? What's really new here? Well, perhaps you heard about it, but uh, there's something called the Inflation Reduction Act, and I'll we'll refer to this as the IRA. And uh, well, what is it? <laughs> well. It's the probably the most significant piece of climate legislation. It was passed this summer, 2022, and uh, you hear various numbers for it. I, you know, the the typical number is uh, about 400 billion, but when you take into uh, loans and other things, it's probably 800 billion. It might be more because some of it is in the form of tax credits. And you just don't know how much that's going to be. So, so anyway, but anyway, CCL Citizens Climate Lobby supported it. Uh, there wasn't any price on carbon, but there is a price on uh, methane or or natural gas. Now, when I say a price on methane, what that means is not not a price if you burn methane, but if you let it off in the atmosphere. So. Uh, there is a price on that, so so you can't do that. You really have to flare it. You can't just let the 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 CO two uh, the carb the, the uh, methane out. So let's go on. 
Now, uh, generally, what we can say about the uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act is is it's illustrated by this uh, this uh, uh, bunch of carrots. So lots of carrots. So basically, it's, it's uh, you know things that you get, not not sticks. You know, not you're not a tax or something. And uh, so, so because of that, uh, the citizen climate lobby has broadened the focus to build on uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, so let's go on here. So, so let me give a, sort of a motivation for the new policy areas, and uh, we're going to go to the uh, uh, En-ROADS, the Climate Solution Simulator, and I'll click on this in a minute. <laughs> and it's uh, it's through this climateinteractive.org. That's the website, and it's through the uh, MIT Business School, and uh, it can run on the laptop. You know, you don't need a super su supercomputer. Suparameterization of big climate calculations and best climate knowledge, and uh, sort of the lead investigator is this guy, John Sturman. He's the MIT Sloan professor. And there is sort of a limitation that, that the things that I'm going to show you, they're implemented on a worldwide basis. And you might say that's not very realistic. But anyway, it gives you an idea. And, and there is there is another simulator. I'm not going to go into it tonight, but you can you can look at that and that that shows well if China does this and we do that then what happens? So let's let's go to En-ROADS here. So I'm going to click on this now. One thing that I found is if you try to do this on your phone, yeah, you can get to climateinteractive.org and you can get to the simulator, but it doesn't work. So you really need a laptop to use this thing. Okay, so here we are. Here we are at uh, En-ROADS. And uh, let's explore the simulator. So we'll go to the simulator. Let's see. And here, okay, now this is the bad news. <laughs> the bad news is that uh, there, there's an update on June 1st. So, uh, you know, maybe that's good. Then I didn't have to learn the update so much. But anyway, uh, it probably improve. Is some, the good news is probably improvement. But anyway, let me close that. So what what is this thing? Well, if you look at the left, uh, you'll see uh, basically energy. That's that's the uh, y-axis over here. Exajoule is some huge unit of energy. It's not really important what it is. It's it's a relative 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 is kind of the important thing, and then then energy supply and year. So the so the the, the y-axis is energy per year and the 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 x axis is year and the the color coding is is energy source so you see in 2020 uh let's see what they well it's yeah here you here it goes well it's, it's behaving very well <clears throat> anyway you can tell from the uh yeah here here this is good so it says in in 2020 2034, you expect, well, coal is going to have uh, 184 exajoules in these units. And then and then this, this red thing is oil, uh, blue is gas, uh, green is renewables, pink is uh, bioenergy, nuclear, you can't, you can barely see it here. Okay. Um, and uh, so that's, the, that's the left graph, you know, basically tells you how you're getting your energy this is this is if if things don't change this is the status quo and this is uh, how many uh, gigatons of uh, carbon dioxide is is emitted per year it's equivalence so what that means is you know there's other greenhouse gases so methane and what what you do is you somehow translate that into a greenhouse a co2 equivalent and, that, and you add it to this figure and you see this is you know it's about 400 uh, gigaton is billion in 2000 and then you see it's going up you know you're seeing that uh, 2020 you have uh, 
uh, the, the 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 blue is the set is this well the black is the status quo the blue is the status quo okay well that's the same thing so anyway you can get numbers from this thing if you want and you can change the graph if you want to you you uh we won't do that i at the at the end if you want to look at some different graphs and then i'll show you i'd be happy to do that uh now the, the question is well maybe you have some scenario that okay what, what it says is temperature is going to increase by 6.4 Fahrenheit by 2100. Well, that's actually not very good. Uh, what, what people tell us, what the climate scientists tell us is that really you want to keep that under about two degrees centigrade. So it's at 3.6 degrees centigrade. So that's not great. So we have to do something. So, so what, what could we possibly do? Well, well, we just got an electric vehicle. We like it. So maybe we really want to electrify transport. So we go to this slider here and we move the we move the bar over like this and see what happens. Well, uh it actually isn't uh doesn't doesn't have a tremendous impact. See it goes down to, you know, we're we're aiming for about 2 and uh we're at 3.4. And you see, you see, you can see what the impact is. It's a little hard to see that that the the left changes. You know, you're going to probably you're probably going to use more. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what the impact is there on the left. But anyway, it goes down a little bit electrification. And you can see that now. You you might say, well, what the what the hell are you doing here? Well, what you do is you go you you go to the this uh, bar. You click on it. And what it says is you really electrify everything and you start in uh, 2023 and here's a graph of the you know how you're doing it you know so anyway so basically you can you can dive into it this thing as deeply as you want it want uh you know we're just gonna we're just touching on it a little bit here and then you what you want to do is reset the policy so let's reset the policy so okay so maybe electrification that's certainly not gonna do 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 the whole job here. What what if we go to uh uh well, you know, I've I've used this with students and you know they say, well, what about nuclear? Uh let's let's say we really ramp up nuclear. Well, and, and you see what happens is that nuclear, yeah, nuclear was really on the left side, there wasn't much, but now there's more, but still you're not uh it's it's not uh, great you know it really doesn't help very much and part of that is that it just takes so long for for nuclear to 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 to, to. so it takes a long time to build the plants and really the sooner you can get rid of the co2 the better you know really be your your you the co2 it has a very long lifetime so 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 yeah, nuclear really is not going to save the day, you know, no matter, and that's really highly subsidized. You're building nuclear like crazy. Okay, so let's go back to you, you reset the policies here. Uh, what's another one? Well, uh, let's, let's, let's say, let's say you really decide that uh, uh, may, maybe build energy efficiency in buildings. Maybe that, let's see what that does. Uh, that's, that's, that's actually pretty good. So energy efficiency in building is pretty good. Now you see some of these things that that if you do them together, they're not going to have the same effect. You know, let's say we just go for the electrification of buildings, then then we're we're uh, uh, you know that's pretty good. Let's say we do that together. Well, yeah, that's pretty good. If we really electrify buildings, that's 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 you know that that really you're getting a bang for your buck there because you know part of it is that 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 uh, they use a lot of, you know, there, there's a lot of energy. And the second thing is you can do it immediately, you know, so, so quick is better in this game. So let, let me, let me go back to my uh, reset the sim simulation reset policies. Now, now uh, well, of course we're citizens climate lobby. So we have to, you know, we have to do carbon price. What if you do carbon price and really we're aiming for two, uh, we, we want to, lower things to two so let's really crank up the carbon price oh that, that's good carbon price is good now you might say well maybe you're putting the carbon price at 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 uh 
you know, $1,000 a ton or whatever, uh, it's not that severe. Uh, let's take a look at what the scenario is. It, it, I think it's a quasi realistic scenario. Uh, by 2100, you're, 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 uh, you're, you're uh, up to 250 a ton. But basically, the idea is that you're, it's, it's kind of like the CCL proposal, you're, you're scaling it up. Uh, uh, you're taking 10 years to do that. So, you know, it's $25 per year. So here's a graph over here that's showing you how these scale that up. And you see that has, that has a really big effect, you know, so that's why CCL originally, you know, that was what we loved. So let's, you know, you're still at 2.6. So we have to throw in some other things. So let's say you throw in energy efficiency and we throw in electrification. You see, you see there, there is a, you know, once you throw in the carbon price, you know, you're going to get these electrification energy efficiency anyway so it doesn't have that big effect now let's one thing that really kind of helps is is uh if we go with methane let's say we do methane let's say we 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 do a moderate methane you know if you really go crazy with methane you can get to two but but that then you're then you're talking about agriculture too and that could be a little difficult i think so so methane is one uh that's good what's what else is good here uh, we can throw in. Uh, let's let's say we do we do do some transport here. Yeah, let's let's say we really we go with that, and let's say we do energy efficiency here. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, let's say we do some. Uh, uh, yeah, let's say we deforestation. Now we're down to two. Uh, so so this is a kind of this is the kind of scenario you need. You know, you need energy efficiency, you need electrification, building efficiency, deforestation. Let's say we do a little afforestation. And now we're under two. That's good. Now, the elephant in the room, so to speak, is this carbon renewal removal thing that, that you know, if if you can get it to work, it's great. But, you know, that's uh, that's uh, uh, technologically, it's not it's not not so clear. But but anyway. You see with this variety of things with the carbon price, energy efficiency, building in the industry, you know, variety of things you, we can we can get down to to the 1.7 C by 2100. That's what we need to do, basically. So let me let me uh, uh, let me reset the policies and then let's uh, let's get out of here. Uh, let's see. How do I do this? Oh, so let me go back to my. Uh, presentation here okay so 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 that that kind of is is this what enroads tells us and so that kind of motivates you know it's, it's not an exact motive motive motivation well let me i probably should look at a question in chat but uh oh oh change the population actually it doesn't have much uh, renee i'll get back to that but it doesn't have much impact actually because the population growth is in the it's in places where they don't use much energy. So, so yeah, we can look at that later, but, but that's a good question. So let me see, how do I get, a, oh, that's bad. Where is my cursor? Well, wait a minute, here we go. Okay, so, so let's, uh, let me go back to this. So this leads to four, I'll write that down. So we'll look at population if we have time. Uh, so the four policy areas, well, number one, price on carbon, that makes sense, right? Then the healthy forest, you know, it, it doesn't have that much impact as far as uh, CO2, but it's certainly good and it has some impact. Uh, the third is uh, permitting reform. That's not directly relevant, but uh, to make the best use of electrification is very important. And then the number four is one that you know it actually has quite a large impact is building efficiency and electrification. So let's let's continue. So so let's just look at in, in more detail what some of these things are. Uh, so it supports the carbon tax. The money is given to people. And it's referred to as carbon fee and dividend. And the fee is applied wherever fossil fuels. Well, the, the good thing about it is, is as 
basically a very uniform thing. And just three points. One is that uh, Canada already has a carbon fee and dividend. And you know, every three or four months they get a dividend. And another thing is that the European Union uh, has what's called a car carbon border adjustment. And uh, it's starting, I say 2026, that'll be when it's fully implemented. You can look this up, but it's starting in 2023. They're, they're, they're starting to see how much carbon is coming in from other countries. But basically, that means that the exports from the U.S. will be accessed a tariff if the U.S. doesn't have a carbon tax. So if they're going to get our money if we don't have a carbon tax. That's the CBAM. Now, another thing is that there's been a lot of talk that that, you know, one way we can we can punish the uh, well, I don't know, punish, but stop people from uh, polluting who are overseas is to have a CBAM, a carbon border adjustment. So, for example, from India or China or something, the products coming in the United States, they're going to have to pay a tariff, basically, for a CBAM. And it's been pr proposed that we adopt the CBAM. And that's that's a popular. But what isn't so popular is that at least under, if we're going to stick to international trade agreements, you can't have a CBAM without a price on carbon. So we need, if we want to, if you really want a CBAM, you, you need, you need a price on carbon. Now, just because this is so important, I thought I'd show you this little video if it if it'll work. Oh. What is a carbon fee and dividend? And how does it help solve climate change? Burning fossil fuels causes carbon pollution, which traps heat and warms our planet to dangerous levels. To stabilize our climate, we need to stop carbon pollution. How? By changing the rules to the game. Right now, carbon pollution is free for everyone. With a carbon fee and dividend, fossil fuel companies pay a fee when they pollute the air. Since most companies like saving money, they'll change their behavior to avoid the carbon fee. They will become more energy efficient or clean up their act with cleaner energy. With this policy, our carbon pollution goes down while green goods and services go mainstream. Costs for some things will go up, but for many purchases, we'll be able to substitute a greener choice. And as businesses move to greener products, they'll provide us with more affordable green options. For example, car companies will shift to producing affordable electric cars. And power companies will replace fossil fuels with clean energy. And remember that carbon fee? The money collected from fossil fuel companies goes to every American as a monthly dividend or carbon cashback. People can spend the monthly cash back however they want to, helping everyone afford the transition to green energy. When we stop burning fossil fuels, our air will be clean, our health will improve, and our climate will stabilize. All we need is a price on carbon with the money given back to the people. Learn how you can support putting a price on carbon at cclusa.org. And uh, here's some more more uh, very good videos. But anyway, uh, let's go on to the forestry policies. Uh, you know, it's uh, help increase urban forests, preserve existing forests nationwide, and focus on neighborhoods that don't have trees, basically. And two examples of legislation that we've uh, supported in the past. One is called the Forest Act. Now, this hasn't been passed, and it hasn't been uh, submitted to Congress this year, but supposedly it is going to be. And what this Forest Act does is it uh, it's a deforest de it fights deforestation. So you can't import products that are made from illegal deforestation. The other the other example is the Growing Climate Solution Act. And and if you have any questions about that, ask Roseanne, <laughs> uh, Roseanne Friedman about this because she she lobbied for this. And uh Basically, it's 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 starting a, a education about a, a, a carbon market. So it's uh, uh, it's it's not really starting a carbon market, but sort of organizing them or providing uh, information about a carbon market. And uh, uh, and this was passed. It's not a huge amount of money, but it was within the uh, the Inflation Reduction Act was this this has been passed 
So there's a website where if you're a farmer, you can go find out about about uh, uh, environmental credit markets. And it's not establishing the market, but it's basically uh, finding out about the credit markets. So let's go on a little further. Uh, what kind of permitting reform? So we've heard a lot about that. Uh, okay, well, it's you know it, it's good. We want to you know basically transmit clean energy speed up approval of clean energy products and and then of course we don't want to ram this in ramrod this let people just decide whether they really want it or not and are there specific bills well you've heard about specific bills for example hr1 is there's a republican bill is, is basically uh there's some permitting review there reform there's a lot of other stuff too also mansion has a bill there anyway there are a bunch of bills but at least right now we're not we're supporting certain elements of all these bills but we're not supporting any specific bill now now uh what kind of building electrification policies does the ccl support well uh okay we want more building electrification but we want to keep it affordable and uh you know education and i think the most important thing is there are opportunities within this in inflation reduction act so now we're now we're ready for the good part how can you save money okay great are you ready is everyone ready to save money okay so maybe this is the most important thing is this this uh, calculator so you just click on this so we're ready to go to the calculator and it says, how much money can you get with the Inflation Reduction Act? Well, okay, so uh, so you have to put in your zip code. Well, okay, so this is 77381 and you're a homeowner. Okay, well, a million dollars. Uh, well, maybe that's a little high for us. So let's say you make $118,000, for example. You know, that's probably close to the median in the woodlands i guess and let's say you're 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 filing jointly and there are three people in your house and uh and and that 118 118,000 that's you know page one you know i assume it's page one of the tax return your tax return anyway so let's see calculate what you can save on that oh oh that's that's good so so you can you can uh it tells me you can get upfront discounts of 14,000. Oh, that's really good. Upfront. That's that's really great. And tax credits. Tax credits uh <coughs> 10,500. So total incentives are 24,500. Okay, well they tell you it's estimates blah blah blah, but let's see what some of these things are. Let's, at least so you can get an idea. You so you can try this yourself. You can put in your income and then you go down here and let's look at the rebates. Well, the rebates it's a little dodgy right now because it really hasn't been uh uh set in stone so to speak what 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 the rebates are but anyway you see various things there's the air conditioner electric panel electric wiring heat pump weatherization induction stove and then if you want to find out what these things are you click on this and it says well you heat pump air conditioner heater so et cetera et cetera let's let's go back to uh back to the calculator Let, let's go back to the you know you you might say well these you know you're you're a bit vague about these rebates let's go to the tax credits <coughs> so let's say you want battery storage for your house well you get 30 percent that, that's now what about uh electric vehicle well that's 7500 now that's good yeah we're going to get our we just bought electric vehicle 7500 that's really great yeah i'm looking forward to that uh rooftop solar that's 30% used electric vehicle that's that's uh you know 4000 uh uh heat pump weatherization weatherization we're going to we got some we got some uh uh windows some uh double pane windows that's 1200 electric panel that's 600 Okay, and that's all available now. So we'll be able to, you know, I, I estimate we'll be able to, you know, if all goes goes according to plan, we'll probably be able to take off, you know, 8,700 basically from our taxes last next year. And it's a credit, you know, so it's not a deduction. You know, it's a, that 
that's taking off the amount of money you're paying. Uh, now let's say, let's say you, you don't have that. You, what, what's incredible is even if you have a household income of a million dollars, you can get something, but, but let's, let's say your household income is like uh, 65,000. Let's see what that does for you just to get an idea. <laughs> uh, so, so there, there, because your taxes are not that high, uh, your, your, tax credits aren't that that great but you see get upfront discounts so 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 what are, what are some of the upfront discounts well you get this heat pump that would be really nice electric panel well fortunately unfortunately we got a new electric panel anyway but uh uh electric wiring that'd be nice well we did some of that already but anyway induction stove oh, i really want that so so yeah so it's kind of nice uh, and and it tells you how much uh Let's see what it says here. Yeah, yeah, it says, uh, yeah, it can cover 100%. Well, this is really, for low income, it's 100%. Uh, so uh, so, th so this, this, this is good, this is good. So some of these things, if you're in the low income, you can actually get everything. So let's go back to the calculator and maybe maybe that's uh let, let's just just for fun. Well, maybe not for fun, but anyway, this is something you can try on your own and and let me let me get out of here. Okay, very good. And uh uh let's go forward. Oh, oh, now now I'm really I'm really abusing the audience here because I'm going to talk about physics. Okay? So, so what is this heat pump stuff? Now, this this guy on the left, it's it's uh, it's not one of our members. It's actually uh, Carnot, who is a who is a great engineer, and he he really came up with these ideas. He really came up with the idea of the heat pump. So, how does this heat pump thing work? Well, you take heat from outside your house, and you apply some electricity, some work. And then you 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 move this heat inside the house. So basically, the idea is that you're taking heat from cold and moving it to hot. And you know, according to physics, you can't do that unless you supply some work. But the good thing is, you don't have to supply much work. That's that's the the gist. So so just now, this is really abusing the audience. This is really, but it's the last slide, so I, I can abuse the audience. That that there's a formula that relates the uh, amount of heat you move to to inside the house to the amount of work that you 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 supply through electricity <coughs> and the temperature differences so 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 you know in the ord ordinary electric space heater or if you have an electric vehicle if you have a basically if you have a uh, a space heater in your car essentially uh if you put one watt of, of what one kilowatt hour of, of electricity electrical energy in you can only get one kilowatt hour of heat out well that sounds yeah that's, sounds good but but the the point is that with this heat pump then heat pump thing if you put in the numbers you put in the one kilowatt hour now this is between 40 fahrenheit and 70 fahrenheit so it's relatively you know it's 70 Fahrenheit inside, that's not unrealistic, 40. So it's, you know, things are not as favorable if the lower temperature is lower. But anyway, in Houston, this, you know, this this can often occur. Basically, you get a, a multiplier of 18. So this this is this is really, you know, that's why that's why people love heat pumps. That's why physicists do. Now, this formula, it's <coughs> It's like it's an ideal efficiency. It's the best you can do. Now, real world efficiency, it's it's probably greater than half that. It, in the worst case scenario, is about half that. Now, now, it, even worse than giving some physics, I have some homework for you. Is that homework show that that number is right? And the hint. Now, this is the hint. This is the really nasty thing. Is that in that formula you can't use Fahrenheit temperature. You have to use and not just Celsius temperature, you have to use Kelvin and then you can get that to work. But anyway, I, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And that's really all I have to say.
Oh, should I stop? Hello? Hello? I'm here. I'm just looking and trying to remember if I could possibly define Kelvin. I do so it, basically, you take the Celsius temperature, which is basically you have to, but there's a factor of 32, but you add add 273. Okay. It's this 273 thing. That's that's why you get such a big number because the temperature difference is pretty small, but then you're 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 multiplying by 273 or something, and so you you actually get a quite a large multiplier. That's that's the idea. So the Kelvin temperature is very important here. So anyway, yeah. where, where do you I'm want sure. us to submit the homework? I'm sure uh, I'd, a PDF. Please put it in a PDF and and send it to my email. Now, right. now Barry, remember you asked a question at the beginning. Oh right, right, right. You want to take right, right, right. Let's go back. Let's go back. Show of hands. Let's, let's let's go back to let's go back to the question in the beginning. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Who? What was Marshall Sanders? How did he make his fortune? Or <laughs> what was the family money from? Does anyone know? Put it in chat if you know. Yes. Wasn't it like potato chips or something crazy? Uh. Uh. I'm afraid. Charlie, it was that's not correct. I think it's Slim, oh. Slim Jim. I'm sorry, sorry, Paul. That is not correct. I don't remember. It's actually Big Red Cola. <laughs> well, ah, true. okay. Well, I knew it was some sort of junk food. Well, you know, they're all junk food. So, so that's that. You know, that's not that's actually not a great. You know. I, I don't know. Do you consider Funyuns not junk food? Well, maybe, maybe or Lone Star beer. That's the only one. Maybe. Well, you know, I, I don't know. But but he was from Waco, uh, Texas. So uh -huh. if that helps for a okay. hint. Now, now, one of our participants asked about the uh, if population. If, yeah, let me let me let me go back and let me show you what happens with that. Uh, now, if I can find, oh, that's that's spin glasses. That's not. Uh, let's go back here. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, let me go back to Climate Interactive and uh, open the link. Yeah, and the Climate Simulator. And uh, uh, yeah, okay. So so let's let's see if we really go with population. Uh, so this is the status quo. Let's say we well, I have to see which which way we go. Okay, so low growth. So it helps some, but it's not uh, it's not a game changer. Basically, uh, now you can see the 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 uh, 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 what the assumptions are. But you know, part part of it is part of it is that that you you have to you can't turn the cu curve over that fast. And you know that's similar to nuclear. Is that yeah, nuclear is great, or well, you can argue about that, but 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 it takes a long time to 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 build plants and basically all that stuff, and you can you know you're limited by resources anyway. Uh, so there's a chat question here. Uh, no, no, uh, my understanding was that he, well, part of his money was through Big Red Cola. I I. I might he might have made money through through uh, through real estate as well. Other questions is any other questions? Um, I had I think we had, I guess I had a brief introduction to the inroads uh, right by by the lobby right. And I think it's uh, reminds me of it's. It's good news and bad news. I mean, it's really neat to see it, but sometimes, you know, like we we read and we feel like planting trees is going to fix everything or electrification, and it's it can be disappointing too to realize that it's really yeah. not yeah. going to really knock things down by doing any one of these. Right, it has to be a combination. So I think that was good, and also uh, I was fortunate enough to get a rebate or tax credit on my car when I bought it. But I wasn't aware of all the other options right. that we have. So I think that really did uh, enlighten me, which is the purpose of these talks. 
Right, right. So, so yeah, I I urge everyone to to go to the Rewiring America, and uh, see see what 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 what's available. You know, even if you have very high income, some of these things uh, uh, you, you you're still you're still eligible through the tax credits, basically. Any other comments? I really appreciate your time. Uh, yes, I have one. I have a question. Yes. yes. Charlie. Charlie? Charlie? Yeah. Hi. I wasn't able to watch the whole thing. Did you mention nuclear? I did. But you yeah. see, the thing is, let's do let's do a scenario with nuclear. Yeah. So I'd be happy to do that. That's one that I'll reset my policies. <laughs> and let's say we really go with nuclear like crazy. Okay. Similar it just doesn't make that much difference really yeah that's that's the that's the that's the secret basically nuclear is not gonna not gonna save us oh well, I, don't, I don't i'm not saying it's the, the silver bullet but i'm curious that as to that it doesn't seem to make that much difference it doesn't um, make that much difference no the, the 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 thing that's really building electrification is really that that has a you know the the ones that are that may be a little surprising is that the building the energy of well energy efficiency that's that's quite good <laughs> but part of it is that energy efficiency you can start now and then yeah. methane is a, methane is another good one because you know methane that the 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 lifetime of methane is shorter so again you 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 know it's helpful now methane i i hesitate to put it all the way down here because then you're talking about uh, agriculture and that's you know it's possible but it might well be now i i found out something uh about methane that a huge source of methane is cows yeah. and initially i thought it was cow farts but it's actually cow burps mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i uh, mean you can what yeah you can you can look at their assumptions on this i mean i i uh i'm not sure what the detailed assumptions are on how much of it is through fertilizer and cows and whatever so well there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in there but uh let me also mention that um the reason other reason i bring up nuclear and i don't know if roseanne was able to get the get the word out yet but um our dear friend uh Oliver Stone is going to be producing or directing a uh, nuclear documentary on June 7th. And there's a special preview of it that's supposedly invitation only, but it said basically take this invitation, send it out to whomever you want. And I sent that out. So there is a Zoom invitation to talking with being a, a, an opening or a pre previewing of it with Oliver Stone online. And that's gonna happen on June 7th, I think it is, or wherever it is. Uh, Roseanne, you, you have it, right? Yeah, I can uh, go ahead and forward that to Paul and then he can forward it to everybody in his group. Oh, I'll do that. I sent that around to our group, but uh, for people who were interested. Yeah, but we'd I, can, we'd I can send it to you, Paul. Yeah, an another interesting thing about, about the En-ROADS is if you look at Maybe this is too much, but if you look at, uh, where is this? Uh, well, where I can't even find that. Uh, uh, well, the, I I can't even find that on here now. The the, you know, if you if you a breakthrough or something, you know that that, that there, there's something like that. I don't I don't see that right now. It's carbon removal. carbon removal technology. Yeah, that's 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 good. But I thought there was one on like, like well, uh, also the zero new zero carbon. Yeah, where is that? I don't see it. It's oh, like, here it is. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's that's you know that. Yeah, sure, it helps, but but. Uh, well, where where are we? Wait, oh, okay. So the let me get rid of the methane. Yeah. Better get let me let me reset this. Yeah. So I or not reset assumptions, reset the policies. So so let's let's say let's say go to the new zero carbon. Okay, well, 
you know, that's not a that doesn't have a huge effect, really. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It just it's not going to be any one thing. But no, no, it's not one thing. That I think that's a that's a very important point to to to, to you know, and, and I think that was part of the, part of the reason that the CCL that we've gone to these this fourfold. Right, vote. right. The new zero carbon also has a lag time, as you can see over. Right, 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 right. Yeah, because yeah. it takes. If we discovered it today, it would take. 20 years before you start building these plants and stuff yeah and plus plus that's that's optimistic i'd say wouldn't you larry or yeah you know that that that's that's uh yeah so um, yeah the, the other thing i'd like to mention and i've been trying to <coughs> spread this idea out for a while and i don't know if i've mentioned it in this group or not have you heard of my term the term silver buckshot mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what they use in in <coughs> training. Good. So again, the idea is it's not a silver, it's not a single bullet, it's not a single silver bullet, it's silver bookshot. Let's throw everything at it. And I love that analogy because gun nuts pick up on it. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, uh, CCL is a nonpartisan organization. We say gun enthusiasts. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yep. That's okay. Good. Now, right. Paul, this time I knew Charles would do it because it's time for Paul to put it into that discussion. And uh, just thank Dr. Friedman for yeah. doing this. I said I Absolutely. learned a thank lot, and I'm sure everybody has. Thanks, Barry. There's sure. also a reminder to uh, that this is going to be on the woodland screen. I guess it's a. Uh, it, it, it's in the chat, but it's you go to the YouTube channel from the uh, website and this will be on there within a few days as will most or at least the last nine that we have done will be there too. So if you missed one, you can go back. If you can share this with other people, let them know that it'll be available on the YouTube channel. I also put my email address on the chat. Uh, as I said, this is the last one for the 20 three series and then september we'll start again and do nine but uh the reason my email is there is that i welcome anybody who has ideas about topics like this and anything else we've done from water issues to air issues the bay spring creek anything that you can think of that you'd like to hear uh, I will try to find someone or take that that uh, that lead and we'll produce a topic and get it on to the schedule. So email me at that if you have any particular speakers or subjects you'd like to to bring up. Again, I thank everybody for coming and the good questions. Uh, I guess another thing we need to focus on too, uh, one thing I will bring up is we hear a lot about flaring gas wells and all the wells that are leaking that no one's fixing and they want us to do it for them. But uh, to me, that's one of the easier things to do as well is. Yeah, and you you see that with the methane emissions, you know, that's you know, that's part of it there and it has a big that's impact. That's right, they're flaring <laughs> gas and, and then I, I thought that uh, Dr. Friedman said that they were paying for it, but I don't know who's paying what. Oh, it's within the IRA, it, within the Inter Inflation Reduction Act. There's a, you know, there's a certain amount if they, if they, if you don't, if if you just let it out in the atmosphere, then there's a there's a fee. Okay. Now I, I don't know I don't know if it's been fully implemented. You know, it's not it's being implemented now. I may, maybe Larry, what can you say about that? You. Well, you have to make the fee dissuade people from doing it. So, I think uh, it's pretty high. I think good. it's pretty high. Yeah. All right. I said we were going to be quiet and I brought it up again. So my apologies. But again, thanks. We'll we'll close it down. And thank you so much, Dr. Friedman, and uh, for being thanks, Paul. I help everybody, everybody for being here. Follow up. We got to do something. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity to speak. You bet. Bye. Thank